So here is uh, the first demonstration for the lab of uh, the request smuggling workshop. In this demonstration, you'll see how request smuggling can be used to uh, trigger XSS on user. We have for this scenario a simple website that has only two pages. Uh, first one is a static uh, page, and then we have a contact form uh, that will focus on a first. Uh, first, we're going to hunt for potential XSS, and uh, we can see that the query string is being reflected here uh, in the action attribute. So, the first thing a tester might want to test manually is to see if tags are reflected, and here we can see that a uh, browser will encode automatically a query string and it will be uh, reflected as is in uh, the page here. So it's good to know that uh, all uh, modern browser will encode query string automatically. So even if you send a link to a, a user or a victim uh, with unencoded character, they will be encoded automatically. Now uh, we can do an additional test on this query, so I'll just use the same uh, query here, and um, I've just decoded the, the value here, and uh, we can see, if I jump to the, the form, that indeed it, it's not uh, encoded, so uh, there is some potential XSS, but I'm not sure yet how I'm going to exploit uh, these uh, weaknesses. So I will open a new tab on a repeater and I'll be using the payload uh, provided in Code Labs. So for this next test, I'm going to test specifically if the proxy uh, behind this uh, localhost port 80 uh, is vulnerable to one of the variant of uh, request modeling. So the proxy uh, will not be uh, looking at transfer encoding and will be just looking at the content land header while the backend, the Nginx application, is properly um, um, interpreting the RFC that uh, it's telling us if you see both content length and transfer encoding, always use transfer encoding in priority. Uh, this is what uh, Nginx will see. So our proxy will send this all this as one request because content length is pretty large. It's more than enough to cover this. So everything will be forward to the backend, but the backend, because it's reading the body section as a chunk mode, will see this as a chunk of zero length and end the body right away. So the right before the X, this will be the end of the first request. This additional character will be prepend to the following request. So if the proxy has a pipeline, a HTTP, uh, an HTTP socket, where uh, it's concatenating all its HTTP requests. This will be uh, left over, and the next request will be prepared by this. So if I'm sending this to uh, the server, right away nothing happens. But if I send this a couple of times, so probably close to uh, 10 requests, I will receive uh, a message like this, uh, 405. 405, it's a message for uh, invalid uh, or not allow uh, method. So method are, for example, post or get, or even put and delete. But the reason why I'm triggering this um, this uh, error is because this letter X is prepending the following request and the following request is basically the same request I'm 
uh, posting over and over and this is creating the exposed method triggering the error that we just saw um, for detection it's pretty hard uh, the more connection pool uh, your proxy has so default configuration with Apache traffic server is around 10 connection this is the reason why I need to push at least 10 requests to fill fill uh, those uh, at least have one request request in each uh, socket and then uh, the victim will be uh, fixed to one of my payload what we'll do next is combine the two weaknesses that we have found so we know that we can uh, prepend any HTTP request so instead of just breaking the method uh, we'll try a payload similar to this or actually this payload where here we know that uh, there will be a uh, uh, HTTP uh, request that will look similar to this that will be prepend uh, uh, actually append to this so even if I'm doing a get to any page on the on the website uh, because I prepend a get with my own request which will trigger an XSS. Uh, I'm adding a foo header just to override this uh, get or post to any URL. So th this way I I'll make sure I'll, uh, the, the backend server will not see this as an invite request. And then everything will be happen. So if the, the user is authenticated and has a valid cookie, it will be also uh, happen here. Um, and we'll see in a moment uh, the behavior. So I'm sending this uh, for a couple of requests. And as we can see, I'm receiving nothing special on my side. This is just the, the home page. So this is the response for just uh, loading the resource root. But if I'm a victim and I'm navigating at the home page, so uh, this is not my uh, session. There are no session that are associated to the burp uh, repeater request that I've just sent. And as I'm refreshing the home page, we'll see uh, the behavior here where the XSS is triggered. So the first thing we can see is that I request the home page and in fact I'm receiving the uh, result for the contact page. And this is the uh, result of uh, this request that was forced to the victim. So the victim is the, the user navigating with Firefox on the website and regardless of the request they've made, uh, we can see that we can trigger uh, an XSS that was initially a vector that was not, not exploitable. But here we've shown that uh, we can force uh, the user to an XSS, but it could be to force to trigger an action and the action will be triggered with a session cookie and potential session state. So it's uh, pretty powerful. So this was exercise one. You'll see uh, additional variant in the, the next exercise with uh, HTTP2.